this uh, episode we will talk about um, hydro dissection and um, groove and direct chop. You really need to make sure at the beginning that the that the entire nucleus is, is movable. I think it's very important. Yeah. And it's, one thing that you overlook. I think the hydro dissection, the hydro delination, the softer the nucleus, the more important it is to, to have a very good hydro dissection and hydro delination. You see the wave? I, I see the wave and what I also like to do is to, to push a little bit down on the nucleus in order to, to have the BSS coming uh, up and not be trapped. Yeah, I think this is very... Once, once I see the first wave coming, then I, I push down on the nucleus a little bit. I just dimple down in order to uh, sometimes, well, theoretically, sometimes you can blow out the posterior capsula if you have too much pressure behind the lens that um, cannot go anywhere um, from the injection. And but then, then, yeah, just make sure that you, can, that you can twist it and turn it. And I would say that um, the, for, for your case, um, the hydrodissection came very easy for you and the hydrodelination. I know that there is some... Some other surgeons that have had a lot more problems um, starting with the hydrodissection. But I think it's very encouraging as well because w what we've seen so far is that you had some, some problems at the beginning with uh, freezing, for example. Um, and everybody will have that. Um, will have some parts of the surgery that are easier and some surgery parts are harder. But I think the uh, hydrodissection part is uh, is also. I mean, it looks easy, but it isn't easy to be to be performed um, okay in and in a systematic uh, fashion every time. I think this takes a lot of experience. Actually, I, I think more than the um, freezing part and everything else. But um, it it looks easier. I don't know why. Yeah. Especially in in the, for example, when I when I watch your surgeries, it it looks really easy. Oh, there's uh, bubbles. Yeah, and the, there is a super, oh, the decentration, and um, I seem to accommodate a lot into the microscope. This is when you tell me always look at the screen and uh, adjust the, the zoom, but it yeah. doesn't help too much in my case. Well, that was a very nice groove, right? So yeah. um, any tips for the groove, for if you start grooving? <clears throat> well, the grooving part, I don't, I don't like it particularly, but the grooving part is important because you get a feeling for the depth of the of the lens and the anatomy of the of the capsular bag and of the of the lens, um, which um, teaches you nice how how deep um, you can go. But um, for example, what I I miss here is the the red reflex. So actually. I remember that when I when I used to groove, I I did not uh, go often um, too deep, too deep yeah deep enough or too towards uh, the posterior part, and uh, as soon as you you see the red reflex, then you know you're you're through. And I think this one is a more recent case with a, a direct chop technique. This is what I I prefer nowadays. So regarding the groove, I think uh, you're absolutely right that if you start grooving, you have a tendency to um, to be too superficial. And when would you start, or what, when would you recommend going for a direct chop after uh, how many fakers? Probably earlier than you, because for me, I think the, the direct chop made a real big change in the, um, in the, in the learning curve. And also, I, when, I, when I still used to groove, I, I felt that I, I had more complications than uh, afterwards. So I think I would, I would shift a little bit earlier towards, um, towards direct chop. Um, oh, right. It depends oh, also. Nice chop. It depends of the of the machine. I mean, I have uh, not so much experience with several machines. I'm just with the uh, with the early machines, and I think this um, this Faco mode that we use is very very good for for direct chop technique. So you have a very good holdability, and um, it's quite easy actually. Any so tips for the direct choppers? If if you want to try a direct chop, um, which nucleus would be best? Uh, well. Not the soft one, yeah. <laughs> definitely at the beginning. And if you have a soft one, then insist on the hydro delineation as well. Um, sometimes I don't do a, a, at all hydro delineation, especially if the uh, nucleus is, is uh, thick enough and uh, hard enough. Um, a little bit of cleaning up anterior cortex and then just 
try to really get deep inside the, the nucleus. All right. So if, if, if any of you wants to start chopping, I think the recommendation is very good to, to go for a nucleus that's a bit harder, that gives you extra security. Yeah. And I think another part, if you start chopping, is that you really, the instrument that you use to chop, um, we are not doing a horizontal chop and not a vertical chop. We're doing some kind of mixed chop. And I think it's very important, or at the beginning, you are a bit too hesitant with the instrument when you start chopping, um, ending up that you are not, uh, not deep enough, and then you, you can have problems with breaking. So hard, harder nuclei and um, going in a bit deeper. I think that's, these are my tips. Hydrodissection is, um, looks easier if you can, looks easy if you can do it. It's, it's hard to achieve. Um, think about the dimpling down technique after you've seen the first wave. Um, if you do the groove, um, at the beginning you are a bit too superficial, just remember that. And if you want to start chopping, I would recommend after 200, 250 fakers maybe, um, Go for a hard, hard nucleus and um, try to think of the chopper that you really have to dig down into the nucleus before you chop it apart. Tell us uh, what your technique is and uh, what, do you, what you like. Mm -hmm.